Good morning. Okay, so this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going through the names of God. Let me grab it. We're going to be going through the names of God. Our pastor um, this week shared with us 30 days of prayer, praying the names and attitudes of God. Reading it backwards, sorry. So that's attributes, not attitudes, sorry. And so we're going to be on two. I started one yesterday with a, one of my groups that I'm going to be starting. I have um, a great group of people, and I'm going to be kind of a, I guess, a life coach, a Christian life coach for them. And so this is part of their devotional time. They need to be getting up at 6, and um, we get on as fast as I can as once I prepare what the study will be for the morning. So we're going to be going through this. So you are benefiting from that that group that's meeting so we're going to be doing that as well and I'm going to go ahead and read first and then we'll as I read after I read I'll go ahead and crochet so Lord I just ask you into this time and I ask that you will bless it thank you so much for those that are here and I pray that you would give them your word and that your word would bless their hearts in their day in Jesus name amen all right good morning Miss Phoebe she's one of my group I'm glad you're here okay so our verse that we're going to be starting with we're going to be in Okay, we're going to be in Leviticus. We're in Leviticus 20, verse 7, and it says to consecrate yourselves and be holy because I, the Lord your God, because I am the Lord your God. Keep my decrees and follow them. I am the Lord who makes you holy. So again, we're looking at who God is, an attribute of God. And the first one is God is Jehovah M. Kadesh, which means God who sanctifies. Good morning, Miss Nika. Hopefully Etzel's with us. A God who separates from all that is evil and requires that the people who follow him be cleansed from all evil. So what it says is that we are to be consecrated and be holy because the Lord your God is holy and to, dec to keep the decrees and follow them I, the Lord, your God, am holy. Now, my Bible has cross-references. So, from here, it takes us to Q, which is Ezekiel, or Exodus 31.13. So, then we go to Exodus 31.13. And, actually, another cross-reference takes us 13 through 17. And it says, Say to the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for generations to come, so you may know that I am the Lord. Your, Lord I am the Lord who makes you holy. And for the second cross reference, it goes on to verse 17. Observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it must be put to death. Whoever d does any work on it. Sorry, reading and running. Whoever does any work on it any work on that day must be cut off from his people for six days work is to be done but the seventh is a sabbath of rest holy to the lord whoever does any work on the sabbath must be put to death the israelites are to observe the sabbath celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant it will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. And in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he abstained from work and rested. And then that takes us to Ezekiel 20, 12 and 20. Now go ahead and go there, but we're gonna stop for a second because that had a lot of words in it and I wanna make sure we, we touch on what it's talking about. So my title was, Have You Had a Sabbath Today? And um, a lot of people don't even know what the Sabbath is. The Sabbath was a Jewish holiday. Um, it was for God that set up in Genesis after his six days, like we just read. Six days they worked. He worked. He created the earth. And then on the seventh day, he rested. He rested from his work. So what it's saying to us is that God... God wants us to have a day of rest. God wants us to have a day that we can set aside for him that we keep holy. Now, I say it was a Jewish holiday because when Christ came, he didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. Jesus was the God of the Sabbath. We're not bound by the constraints of if you don't keep the Sabbath, 
you're, you're, we're going to have to kill you. That's not us anymore. So no stress there. Okay. No one's saying that you're going to die, but Jesus came to fulfill the law. He is still nevertheless the Lord of the Sabbath. He is still the one that wants to have that Sabbath time with you. And so when we set aside time now in our day, we can have a Sabbath each day. Here is our Sabbath now. We woke up and we're resting in the Lord. This is our time with God. Now this is a daily Sabbath time that we're taking to focus on who God is and what he is in our lives. But we also have a weekly Sabbath time where we set aside a day where we're not working, where we're not stressing, where we're not uh, consumed with trying to get ahead and make money in our agenda, but we set it aside for the Lord. It's our Sabbath unto the Lord. It's given to God. So that looks like sometimes it looks like us going to church or sometimes it looks us like us going to midweek Bible study or maybe our work schedule doesn't allow that. So maybe there's not something that you can fit in that's at church on your off day. So your Sabbath might look like you logging into one of these teachings or something like that. It's you setting aside time and honestly it's between you and God. What my Sabbath looks like is not going to be what everybody's Sabbath looks like. But why are we consumed with the Sabbath? Because, you know, we're not Jewish. But we're Christian. We're supposed to be in a relationship with God. God is asking that we have one day a week that we set aside to have a relationship with Him. Because God is Jehovah M. Kadesh, the God who sanctifies. He can't sanctify us if we never set aside time to be sanctified. So what God is asking is that set aside time to be with me. Set aside time that you can be sanctified. And what are you doing with that time that you're sanctified? You can't just make it your own agenda. You can't make it doing what you feel you need to be getting done. It has to be onto the Lord. It should be what is good and pleasing and growing in your relationship with Him. It has nothing to do with or look like what anybody else's Sabbath would look like. Again, it is between you and God. It's personal between what you feel you can do to set aside time and be with the Lord. And it doesn't have to be that you're like, you know, leave home and you're all by yourself. It can be that you're wherever you are, but you're setting aside your time as unto the Lord. So the next one was Ezekiel 12. I'm sorry, Ezekiel 20. 12 and 20. So Ezekiel 20, 12 and 20 says, Also I gave them my Sabbaths as a sign between us, so they would know that I, the Lord, make them holy. It's a sign. Hey, Jerry. Jerry was our great, awesome waiter at Denny's in Ridgecrest. Awesome. We just loved having him as a waiter. I'm so glad you're here. We're in Ezekiel 20, 12 and 20. So he is saying that also I gave them a, gave them my Sabbaths as a sign between us so they would know that I, the Lord, made them holy. So God has already given to us. There's nothing we can give to God. We were just talking about that last night with my uh, life group um, that I'm life group coaching. And anyone that needs a life coach, that's what I'm going to be doing, I guess. So if, if you're looking at uh, possibly needing a life coach, hit me up. But... Uh, He's wanting to have time set apart that you can be holy. He's giving you that time. What do we have to give him back? Like we were talking about, none of us are the top tithers in our church. We don't make the most money. So we can't really give him the most of our money because we're, we're like that widow's might. We give as much as we can. Um, but we do have our time and we do have our talent. And that's what we can give unto the Lord. We can give him our hunger. We can give him our, our time in the word. We can give him our our talent, whatever that talent may be. Doing, watching kids, going to work, m meeting the needs of other people, being the light and the salt in their lives. So that's that's our tithe and our talent that we can give unto the Lord. But we have to be prepared for that. We, that just doesn't come out of the thin air. And just because we have God in our lives doesn't mean that we can just share without being in the Word. The Word is God's Word to us. If we're not putting it in us, we have nothing to give out from us to give to other people other than ourselves. And I don't know about you, but what I have in me is not worth anything, not, not a grain of salt. So 
you need the word to be able to take into you to be able to give to others. So the next one is, keep my Sabbaths holy, that they may be a sign between us, that you will know that I am the Lord your God. That was verse 20. So my cross-reference at the bottom um, talks about Sabbaths. Israel's observance of the weekly and annual Sabbaths, days and times set aside for rest, relief, and worship were intended to remind the people that they had been set apart as a holy nation. We also have been set apart as a holy nation. We are reserved for God's purposes. We have been grafted in. He has accepted us as his children. When we ask Jesus into our heart, we are also part of that holy nation. So, God would use them to reveal and demonstrate his purpose standards and glory to the world so we want that right we want to be able to show God to those around us we want to be able to show God's purposes to those around us that's not going to happen without us being in the word that's not going to happen without us being in prayer that's not going to happen with us without us focusing on what God has for us picking it up hello Julie she's from a friend of mine from HDC I'm glad that you're here Okay, so we're looking at being in the Word, taking that Sabbath time, making it holy. We know that we can work, right? We all have that in us. We all want to do, do, do as unto the Lord, right? And he's asking for one day. He's saying that's fine. Six days, do it. All thumbs up. Do that work as unto the Lord. But he's asking for one day, one day that we give him as a rest day. Resting is unto the Lord. I don't know about you. It is super harder for me to rest as unto the Lord than to do as unto the Lord. I, uh, I love to do, as you can tell. So what are you doing to accomplish that Sabbath in your life? How are you making that a reality? God wants to meet you where you're at, have you take up that Sabbath, sit down with him, and have relations with him. Be there with him. Be present. Be present in the moment. His relationship with you is no different than your relationship with your spouse, no different than the relationship with your with your kids. And you want to improve those relationships with your spouse. You want to improve those relationships with your kids, with your coworkers, with those in your oikos, with those around you. Then you need to improve your relationship with God. People cannot replace your relationship with God. You will never find a relationship with a person that you should have with God because God has created that whole, that, that eternity in you, that desire for eternity, and it can only be filled by God. And when we try to fill the God void in our lives with people, it makes them idols in our lives. Good morning, Miss Alicia. I'm glad you're here, my friend from Ridgecrest, my from my girls group. So when you're trying to fill that God void with people, you're making those people idols in your life. Now, I don't know about you, but if you remember what God said about idols, you shall have no idols. You shall worship no idols before me. Now, I know all of us start to think of, oh, I don't have any little statues in my life. Yeah, yeah, you do. When you expect your husband to meet the needs of God in your life, to be there at all times, to make you never sad and to always be all what you're supposed, you think you need, you're making him an idol in your life. When you hold your kids so tightly that nothing can get in and everything goes according to your plans for your kids and your life, they're an idol. And do you know what God did to idols in, uh, in, the, in the Bible? Yeah, he removes idols from your life. I don't know about you, I would like to keep my husband and my kids in my life. So I have le I learned a long time ago that I will not make my kids an idol in my life. I will not make my spouse an idol in my life because I don't want them removed from my life. I want to fill that God hole in my life with God because then I can give out God to my family. And that's God's whole purpose is that we have Sabbath time with him. He fills us up and we can give that to the Lord, to give that to others as unto the Lord. I don't know about you, but that sounds way better than having to remove idols from my life. 
Again, God has a plan and a purpose for you. It is bigger than you could possibly imagine. It is different than what you can possibly imagine. We all have plans and purposes in our lives right now. We all have a direction that we think we need to be taking. But God, but God, but God's plan is far greater than we could possibly imagine. We can only think finite. We can only think in the moment. We can only think in time. But he thinks infinitely. He thinks way bigger than we can possibly imagine. Our plans are good. Don't get me wrong. His plans are bigger than you can possibly imagine. But you have to have the faith. You have to have the faith to step out and say, yes, Lord, I want that in my life. I want to have you in my life. I want you to be the biggest thing in my life. I want to do whatever you've called me to do. And you can't do that unless you have the Lord in your life. You can't expect the Lord to speak to you through the word. In this word, these words mean nothing if you don't have the Holy Spirit to help you understand them. So you want to spend those Sabbath times with him. He is the Jehovah M. Kadesh, the God who sanctifies you. But he can't sanctify you if you don't have the Holy Spirit to understand, to read the word, to be able to then take it into your life. So how do you get that? How do you help? How do you become one that is sanctified, set apart? How do you have that Sabbath time with the Lord? You admit. You admit you're a sinner saved by grace. And you know, I say this all the time at the end, but it's a daily thing. That sun comes up every morning. It's come up every morning since the dawn of creation. Every morning, his mercy is new every morning. And every morning we sin, we fall short from the day before, from the night before, from the morning when we get up, before we can get out here and get together. We sin, we fall short. We need to admit that we're sinners saved by grace. That there's nothing good in us, but through him we can do all things. We need to believe, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Believe that he died on the cross to save us from our sins. Believe that he rose again and is coming back for us because he loves us. Because that was the whole plan of all that's in this word. The whole plan was just to get us to, to a point where we can be together with him again since the fall. So we have to believe, believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Believe that he has come to save us from our sins. And we need to confess, confess. Lord, I fell short. Lord, I failed to have a Sabbath. Lord, I, I, get, I get frustrated with my spouse. I, I, I bring worry and strife into the lives of my kids. I, I speed along the road when I'm driving. You know, I, I, I sometimes like, lack the compassion to take the time with people. I fall short. I can't do this. I have to confess that to the Lord because that's the only way that we can be right. It's the only way that we can get out and sanctify ourselves, get out all that evil that's in our lives to be who God's called us to be. So I encourage you, I encourage you to have a Sabbath. Have you had your Sabbath today? Have you had a Sabbath this week? Jehovah M. Kadesh is the God that sanctifies you and wants to make you whole and wants to clean you and wants you to be in relationship with him. Be in relationship with God. It's the only thing that will fill your life. Thanks and we'll see you later.